dabei. Nach den Startups darf ich Ihnen jetzt von der Bäumer Group den Herrn Neubert vorstellen mit seinem Vortrag zum Improving of the Environmental Impact of Mining. Wir freuen uns auf Ihren Vortrag und sind gespannt äh, auf die Inhalte. Bitte. Thank you very much for, oh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, as said, my name is Kilian Neubert, working for Bäumer Group. Um, the topic of today's presentation is primarily focused on uh, um, conveying operations, improving the environmental impact of mining operations by using state-of-the-art conveying solutions. Um, a brief look on the agenda. Um, I'm going to start with a short introduction about Bäumer Group in general. I'm going to briefly touch on FAM the recent acquisition. Um, the second point is going to be on challenges in the mining industry, um, focus on sustainability in this case, um, and then followed by some technical information, um, two case studies in total, where I'm going to talk, uh, make, I'm going to do a, a, a kind of a deep dive into horizontal curve conveying, and then um, going to talk about a case study which we recently um, conducted in engineering as well as a supply contract for a large customer in China. I'm um, going to conclude my presentation at the end. Um, a brief look on the company profile. Boimer Group is still a family-owned business, third generation, roughly annual order intake of 1 billion euros in 2021. Nowadays, total um, um, employees, roughly 5,400 on all continents uh, around the globe, and the strong global setup with references in more than 80 countries. A brief look on the global setup. Um, for those of you that may not know it, um, our headquarter is based in Beckham. It used to be the uh, center of the cement industry in Germany. So that is kind of where we come from. Um, that's where the roots of Bäumer Group are. And, uh, but it expanded around the globe throughout the years. So um, for those of you that haven't heard it yet, um, Bäumer Group has recently acquired FAM um, back in May this year, um, where both companies merged. So nowadays, we are way into the integration process of both companies. Um, well on track by end of this year, we will have our first strategic direction ready. So it's a very good fit for both companies and I guess also for the industry with a combined expertise of now more than 185 years in the field of material handling. So very comprehensive product portfolio we can now offer. Everything basically from the extraction, material handling all the way to the port equipment with both companies can offer. Our expertise um, in a short timeline, so actually um, Bäumer Group was founded back in 1935, um, where Bernhard Bäumer was the one actually inventing the labyrinth seal for the rollers that are in use throughout the world. So that is basically where Bäumer Group started. Um, throughout the years, several developments have been done um, quite successful introduction of the curved conveyor technology already back in 1970, for example. Um, now with FAM on board, we can offer a fairly comprehensive broad product portfolio all the way from the mining itself, mining extraction equipment through transfer conveyors, any type of reclaimers, um, stackers, crushers, um, as well as mills, all the way to the ports, um, ship loaders, ship unloaders. So that is kind of a brief look on the broad product portfolio. And we now combine this with the decades of experience in overland conveying and material handling of Bäumer Group, which is a perfect fit also for the industry in this case. Challenges in mining, how we see it. Um, generally, I just wrote down a few which I think are probably most important. That's sustainability, electrification, and ultimately also decarbonization, which is very important. Productivity, rising costs, that's certainly something that we 
hear often from our customers, technology being state of the art, um, having the best technology in place. Also, with look on the markets, um, we see very volatile markets. I guess I don't need to go into details here. Everyone knows the current situation we are facing worldwide. And then ultimately, access to resources. So we, gain, um, we have further distances. The grades of the deposits go down. We have to convey, we have to extract more material in order to get the raw materials out, which we need um, for our you know, uh, industrial development. Um, and then a bit more into detail, sustainability. I touched on that point, social license to operate. I think this is one of the most crucial points which we hear very often from our customers, they're facing problems to get the social license to operate. And that means we need to gain trust or they need to gain trust and we need to help them getting this trust. We need to gain public confidence. Every mining impact, uh, every mining operation has an impact on the environment, on the communities around the mining operation. And we need to take this in a, in a, into account. Reliability and ultimately transparency, also a very important topic that needs to be considered when planning a mining project. Dust emissions, power consumption, so that is all points that need to be considered. And ultimately innovation, that is probably also one of the most important, crucial points um, for mining industry. Um, sustainable planning of mining projects. From our point of view, it is often forgotten to consider a sustainable planning approach already early in the process of developing a mine site. We need to integrate these aspects from the very beginning. And that is not limited to, but certainly also in regard to the material handling equipment that is being used um, to transport, to extract and to kind of you know, uh, to move the material. Um, and we started with optimizing transport routes, optimizing equipment exactly in that sense. So we support mining customers in a very early stage with conceptual studies, finding the most optimum routing, supporting them and visualizing their, you know, be it uh, a conveyor route, be it their equipment. So that is something that we spent a lot of time on to support our customers here. Um, now I'm going to deep dive a bit into horizontal curved conveyors versus straight conveyors. Where's the difference? Why is that so important? Um, and I'm going to do that based on a short case study, um, actually an engineering study we have conducted for a customer where we looked into um, optimizing the transport of bauxite at a fairly decent rate, 5,300 tons per hour, um, a distance roughly 42.5 kilometers. Um, you see a satellite image here that is illustrating um, how the customer, or the distance that had to be overcome. So we have the original planning of the engineering consultancy that did the study in the beginning was using several straight conveyors to connect point A and B, ultimately the mine with the processing plant and the, stock, um, the stockyard at the end. Um, we looked at it and we saw definitely some in, um, improvement potential there. And what you see here is basically a combination of three uh, long distance conveyors connecting the mine side to the stockyard, um, replacing a lot of straight conveyors, um, transfer towers, and all these kind of things. So where's the impact? Why should anyone look into curved conveying technology and not use conventional, if you will, straight conveying? Um, let's look at the first point. Three co curved conveyors, the total length of the conveyor was roughly 40.6 kilometers in length. If you compare that to the overall length of the straight conveyors, it is roughly 5% less than the overall length. So that has already a, a huge cost impact, as you can imagine. Not talking about the belt widths, which was reduced in that case as well, because we can convey faster with the curve conveying technology. We're talking about uh, you know, speeds up to seven or even more meters per second. Why is the straight conveyors um, 
were running slower. A bit more into detailed transfer towers. That's always a big topic. We have dust emissions. We have, to have a lot of steel work. We have a lot of uh, concrete that is being used to kind of put the transfer towers where they need to be. Um, if you compare the straight conveyors with the, the curved conveyors, you realize that you certainly have less risk of blockages, less emissions in regard to dust, noise, you have less wear, and ultimately um, you have, of course, on the opposite side, higher material costs, more maintenance, more access roads to the transfer towers, more electricity that needs to be supplied, and that is certainly an aspect that needs to be considered during the planning phase. Um, again, I touched on the dust issue earlier, but I guess that is something that nowadays is more important than ever. Um, another one is on in regard to the energy distribution and power cabling. So you need to consider that you need to connect the, um, uh, the conveyors, transfer towers to the power grid. And if you have to do this, you need to have substations, right? In the case of curve conveyors, in this case, we needed four substations compared to 11 substations, which of course has an impact on the capex, on the maintenance of these um, yeah, energy distribution um, and e-houses. And then again, one look on the overall energy consumption of these machines. The designed installed power of the curved overland conveyors were in this case roughly 27.5 megawatts. If you compare this to the straight conveyors, you realize that it's much less power that is actually required to convey the material over this long distance. Um, for the straight conveyors, we're talking roughly 40 megawatts of installed power. So a big reduction here as well, which also has an impact on the environment at the end. Um, one of the last points I want to touch on in this comparison is also the belt lifetime, which is also, uh, oftentimes not considered as we wish. Right? Because if you have the curve conveyors, you have several uh, transfer impacts that you need to consider. You're running fairly fast with 7 meters per second equals 25,000 meters per hour. If you take that into account, you get roughly everything between 0.68 up to 1.15 impacts of the material on the belt per hour. Compared to the straight conveyors, which are much shorter, the time that the belt needs to, to kind of go around is less, so you have more impacts per conveyed material per hour. That is an aspect as well. And last but not least, we also look into the availability. You know, just as assume an availability per conveyor of roughly 99% and you realize once you multiply 0.99 by 0.99 and continue like that, you, the, syst the overall system availability goes down. Whilst for the less conveyor solution, the availability is certainly higher. So that is just a brief deep dive into curve conveys versus straight conveying, which I wanted to mention. Now I'm going to give you an example of a, or give you a case study of a contract, an engineering and supply contract, which Boimer has received a couple of months ago um, for actually three and in future four overland conveyors, large overland conveyors um, that we will supply uh, in China to transport limestone in this case. By doing so, we can replace up to 4,000 truckloads per day, which has obviously a huge impact on the environment um, in this case. A bit more detailed look where are we located, obviously in China, um, actually near Shanghai in the Jiangsu province. That is where the, pro, uh, uh, the plant is located and the project is located. It's actually, we're talking about one of the biggest private cement production enterprises in the Jiangsu province. The material that is required per day, roughly 160,000 tons, um, with an addition aggregates plant with a capacity of roughly 25 million tons per annum. And in future, it is also planned to expand the capacity to have a higher capacity 
Um, and this is why the customer looked into a solution that can be extended, that can be enhanced, that can be, you know, upgraded in a certain way to being able to transport more material in the future. So a look on the cement plant as well as the aggregates plant from, uh, uh, from above. Um, if we put this into the overall picture and um, you see this blue line here, um, this is basically the purpose-built road where the trucks run over um, to transport the limestone from a total of three quarries um, to the cement plant as well as the aggregates plant. So a huge road, a huge um, operation in total. We're talking three independent limestone quarries, talking 4,000 truckloads per day, purpose-built road, and the longest distance between, in this case, quarry one and the cement plant, roughly 16 kilometers per way. And the goals were, in this case, to obviously replace the truck transport, um, reduce the traffic in general, um, to enhance the acceptance of this overall operation, also uh, with the communities around, reduce environmental pollution. And that was kind of the starting point of this whole operation. What you see here is kind of the first draft which we received from the consultant. Again, many straight conveyors, not a lot of uh, redundancy in the system. So we again looked at it and we definitely found a lot of optimization potential there because again, the customer wanted to have a high redundancy because replacing uh, 4,000 trucks by one overland conveying system, you want to have a reliable operation, right? Because if the system goes down, you know, compared to 4,000 trucks, be it a few trucks less doesn't make a big difference. But in this case, that was our proposal. So what you see here is from, from the left to the right side, three quarries that were connected to the overland conveying system. Quarry one already feeding onto two overland conveyors. In future, one will be added. That is why it's kind of grayed out, right? We're going to feeding point number two and feeding point number three, where we always have to separate the overland conveyors in order to being able to feed each OLC overland conveyor from each quarry. So as you can imagine, quite some construction going on right now. Um, that, is, that is kind of the solution which we are now currently executing um, the starting point um, on the left-hand side, in this case, a total of 12 kilometers, um, the, the longest single flight conveyor in this case. Um, in future, we're going to add another one. The feeding point number two, um, we are adding another two overland conveyors, roughly 9.5 kilometers in length, each conveyor. And we're talking 6,750 tons per line, right? So, talking a bit about the arrangement of the conveyors, normally what you would do is have conveyor by conveyor by conveyor in a parallel operation. But as you can imagine, for this size of the conveyor system, the overall structure um, would be quite large. So, what we did was we reduced it to a very cost sensitive arrangement. We put two conveyors aside and on top of each other. But again, by doing so, you need to consider the feeding points, right? So you always need to separate the conveyors again in order to being able to feed them with material. Some uh, images which we produced for the customer, we're, look we're looking at feeding point number two, uh, number one, excuse me. Um, it's, it's the drive station and we're going upwards um, where you Fee, uh, where you see the feeding points, and that is something that we put together for the customer, so he had something to present also to the public, to his management. So it's always to do advertisement, both internally as well as externally, right? So we're starting two conveyors parallel to each other. We are merging the conveyors into one bitch structure, and we are then going to feeding point number two in this case. And that is actually the second video. So coming from feeding point number one, um, where we still have the two conveyors, 
um, we're going to feeding point number two and same goes for feeding point number three in this case where we again have to separate the conveyors and then go into four lines on the feeding point. So once we approach feeding point number two, you see that we have to add another two conveyors in this big structure here and the customer has the ability to feed each conveyor separately in this case. Right? And by doing so, he has a high redundancy in his system. Right? Again, we have the two or four conveyors separated. We go into one structure and that is kind of the arrangement that we use all the way to the end. Right? Exactly. So, in total, we have a change in cross-section. We have a total of nine different cross-section and nine different transition areas. So quite a complex system, as you can imagine, starting off with feeding point number two, two conveyors. Um, we're adding another two at feeding point number two and feeding point number three, all the way to the discharge area. And we did this by using the Bäumer Group Overland planning tool, right? Um, we can deliver dimensions, we can deliver um, everything that the customer needs in order to start early with his concrete work, for example. Um, that is something that we can more or less deliver to the customer once the contract is signed already. So very early stage, the customer can already start putting foundations together and so that you know, we always keep our time and budget. The center to center distance, I talked about it, OLC 1 and OLC 4 in future will have a total length, single flight without any transfer towers in between, right? Uh, 12 kilometers in length. The shorter ones, like it's 10 kilometers roughly. Um, total install power roughly um, 13 megawatts in this case. So compared to a total of 4,000 trucks, that, that's quite a reduction in um, power consumption in this case. Token belt strengths ST, in this case 4000 and ST 3500, so decent size of conveyor belts that were applied in this case. So what were the achievements? The customer expectations for the conveying system were quite large. So basically the customer approached us and said, hey, I want to replace truck transport. I want you to put in whatever is needed to have high redundancy, to have a good system that is running smoothly, um, but also to increase the mine safety due to many road accidents that happened in that area. He wanted to obviously have an efficient and energy saving system that is definitely something that was uh, achieved with the system. Eliminate dust pollution for the residents uh, because that was a big, big thing for them. Again, look into, they have three quarries, they have the conveying system, they have the trucks, they, it's, it's a lot of dust that were emitted in that area. Significantly reduce the carbon footprint, that was the ultimate goal. I'm going to give you an exact number uh, in a few seconds. And inspection maintenance friendly system, that is uh, kind of self-explaining and ultimately greater acceptance of the operations also by the local communities. Um, what were the achievements? The overall CO2 emissions were roughly reduced by 1.5 million tons per annum. So quite a reduction. And again, for those of you that are a bit familiar with the cement production process, there's no way to reduce CO2 emissions by 100% just given the material. So you have to also look into other ways to reduce the overall CO2 emissions. And um, we definitely helped our customer in achieving that by taking off 4,000 trucks uh, per day off the road. And that is some actual images. It's, uh, it doesn't look too nice, although it's 4K, it's a drone image, and I just had to use a video. But it's, it's actual um, pictures from the construction side. So commissioning of the system is planned for early next year. Um, what you see here is also we had to cross a lot of public roads with the conveyor system. And that is a brief look on the discharge area where we can separate the four conveyors to being able to feed into uh, four large silos at the end of the conveyor line. That uh, brings me to the end of my presentation. Just a brief wrap up, brief conclusion. We are all aware that sustainability, sustainability does and will play an even more important role in the future 
for mining projects, the material handling concepts definitely can support mining industry, mining customers in having more environmental friendly solutions, be it in regard to dust, noise, emission, energy consumption, and all these aspects. Um, and yeah, we can only encourage all mining customers to already consider state-of-the-art planning methods and state-of-the-art solutions already at an early stage of the process in developing a mine. Yeah, and again, um, fast layouting and uh, planning methods using AI, for example, can help to, uh, to, to boost the yeah, confidence in the system uh, and also to create this transparency already uh, in an early stage that is needed in order to get the buy-in basically from the communities and everyone involved in these projects. Yeah, again, uh, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. In case you're interested, you have any questions, please ask. And if you're interested to find out more about our products, please stop by at our booth in Hall B2. Uh, number 413. Our colleagues are happy to welcome you with a nice cup of coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe we have a little bit time for some questions if you feel free or have any. I have now the microphone. Otherwise, you have heard the invitation to the booth. Thank you. Come for questions and further information. Absolutely. Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we start